This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Welcome back to another edition of Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. I'm your host and the book shepherd, Judith Bryles. And he, today we have a, a focus on what I believe is critical, crucial, and will help your book to soar. And it's called the, it's, really it's stellar, but it's copywriting with a marketing flair to it on it and that over this past uh, month we've had five authors who have been very successful throughout August very very successful with uh, creating their books with marketing the books creating thousand book pre-orders from Amazon and they have all had something that's consistent their back cover copy on their books snap crackled and pop and what you want to do is to create something that will have your copy, that when people read through, that it is sizzles, um, it has a stunning quality to it, and clearly is stellar, and will you compare it to other books? Uh, so someone who can help make that happen, and is going to give us some guideposts, is Casey Demchak. And Casey writes persuasive marketing materials, that help authors sell more books. In fact, he's written the marketing copy for more than three dozen books this past year that have become Amazon bestsellers. He's known for his innovative approach to creating core message platforms that serve as the mess master messaging document for each book he works with. And he's also an author himself, The Essential Sales Writing Secrets. So with us today is Casey Demchek, and we are going to go through so much. Welcome, Casey. Thanks for having me, Judith. I really appreciate it. Happy to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. So let's kind of, why don't we just tell us a little bit about your own background, would you? Absolutely, Judith. I started out, been a copywriter for 25 years. I've been on my own as an independent uh, copywriter for 19 had kind of an interesting background. Like a lot of people, I went to Hollywood in my 20s and spent some time as a story analyst for uh, Ron Howard and Anson Williams. Went to big film school out there at Loyola Marymount University, where I won a couple of big screenwriting awards and spent my 20s um, trying to get a big break as a screenwriter. I didn't quite catch the wave I wanted to and turned mm. to copywriting. And did a bunch of corporate copywriting for several years, and then many years ago turned to working with a lot of authors and experts, and I really enjoy that, and it's gone well. And so, do you still have dreams of doing that screenplay? No, not anymore so much. Is that, you know, really what I'm dedicated to now is I love working with authors and coaches who really want to make an impact in the world, reach a lot of people, and have a big audience. You know, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of authors who have a great message or a great story. So my, you know, kind of what I'm really dedicated to is helping helping authors right now. All right. So why don't we just start about helping? Well, let's, you know, Casey, I always love that when you, when you, as an author approaches you or comes to you, what do you, what are the common mistakes that they consistently do? You know, one of the first things when I work with authors is, and this is just something I've, I've, over the years, I've noticed with a lot of authors, they're hesitant when it comes to writing marketing copy for their book. They, they, they start off with the mindset, well, I don't want to be a salesperson and be a sales pitch and be kind of Madison Avenue. And so the kind of one of the big mistakes I see right off top is authors who kind of get in the wrong frame of mind, thinking they have to be a salesperson or, you know, I always tell them, no, you don't have to, you don't have to be a sales pitch or a used car salesman. 
you really want to create kind of a down-to-earth, authentic conversation with your crowd, and that's how you get the ball rolling. Why did Casey, I, you know, I always get this too, because I like sales, so I've never been afraid of sales. Yeah. But, I, you know, you've heard it a gazillion times. I've heard it a gazillion times. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want to sell. I, I, I don't want to yeah. market. I want someone to do it for me. Will you do it for me? I get to ask that all the time. And I always say, no, I won't do it for you. I will show you how to do it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Because uh, I'm sure you've seen the same thing. The authors who have the most success get engaged with their own marketing campaigns. It really is a model. Yes. And they also know, I mean, all authors are learning today, even those who sell to New York or other types of levels of publishers, you do the marketing. You do the marketing. All of you need to get over this, this resistance factor. I mean, I'm just going to say it. you got to get over it. So today we're talking about how you can do it. So the common thing is they, you know, they resist the sales. What are the other common things that you see, Casey? You know, they resist the sales. And also when they do, you know, there's some common mistakes that the authors make when they do try to write their, write their own marketing copy or put together a marketing battle plan. They, they kind of make the common mistake of focusing on what their book is about mm-hmm. as a, you know, which is, which is very understandable. But really what you want to focus on are what the big takeaways are. What are people going to get out of your book? You know, if someone were to say to you, you know, because ultimately it comes down to, okay, what's in it for me? And I always teach people, if you get yourself in the mindset of writing about the benefits of your book and what people are going to get out of your book, it's actually much easier. That Taking that approach makes it much easier to, to write your marketing copy and engage in marketing because that's just kind of the basis of, you know, then you're in a position of you feel like you're helping people. Even if you've written a novel, you know, you, you, when you put yourself in the mindset of being a go-giver and the information in your book is going to be of use to people, it, it really gives you a foundation for creating much stronger marketing copy and put, putting you at ease. Uh, and you're right. What's the takeaway? What do they take away? And, you know, I do that when I'm working with authors also on their speaker page copy, you've got to write Mm -hmm. what your audience, and this is the same thing. Those who are listening to you, what are they going to take away? Because if you're pitching yourself to a meeting planner, you got to tell them what the benefits are and the takeaways that the audience is. It's the same thing with the reader. What's their takeaway? Are they going to have, you know, hours of tiltlating delight (laughs) with your erotica? Or are they going to have, you know, are they gonna, are, are they going to be slipping through a weave of maze of thrillers and dynamics and drama and da 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 da? I mean, that's what they're. Are are you going to have goosebumps all over your body as you turn page after page in X Y Z's latest you know horror f- book? That's what they want. So uh, maybe it's fun if if they have to learn how to find the right adjectives. Well, uh, yeah, and they have to also think of, you know, and you just touched on it because a lot of what you were describing were emotional benefits. And I call it a lot of times yes. painting a solution picture with words. You know, whenever you write about a benefit uh, of your book, take it to the next level and talk about, you know, connect an emotion to that. You know, mm-hmm. it comes down to the example of, you know, a, a skin cream to get rid of age spots. Well, it's actually the benefit isn't just to get rid of age spots. It's to get rid of age spots and make you feel younger and rejuvenated and refreshed and more confident. You can always take benefit statements, even with just a few extra words or an extra line, extend it out, kind of make them, uh, you know, get into the emotion of it. And whenever you can, paint solution pictures. You know, what, what is somebody, how is somebody's life going to be changed or transformed? Or even if it's just for a few hours where they're entertained reading your book, you know, paint solution, take, take the benefit statements to a deeper level. For example, if it's a bit of business book, you don't want to just write, you know, these seven tips will help you make more money. You want to get into the, the emotional benefit of, of why people want more money, how it makes them feel, which is what it really comes down to. Exactly. And, you know, it's, uh, Casey, when I sit down with, um, I have a new client that I'm just starting to work with. And 
I mean, I, I sensed there, you know, he was different. And it's like when I get business books in to work on, it's like, oh, my God, another book on management, another book on leadership. And I always ask, so what's unique about you? What's different? Because I have to be able to get into your head if I'm going to work with you um, and help develop your manuscript. So it does have some snap, crackle and pop. But that will let you have at least the chance of standing out from the gazillions of leadership books that have been out here for decades. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. And a bit, I think a big part of that is having a distinct voice. That's another mistake. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about mistakes earlier. When I, when I work with authors is, you know, they'll, they, they may show me some marketing copy they tried to write on their own. And it usually, they're so concerned about getting the right words on page, they're not giving their copy a distinct voice. I've worked with a lot of business authors too. And that's one thing I always go through with them is, you know, your personality needs to come out in your marketing copy. You know, if, if you're kind of a humorous person and you've written your book in a humorous tone, let that come out in your marketing copy. If you're kind of that, you know, I've worked with some business uh, book people that have written books that are really, you know, they kind of have that in your face edgy style. Yeah. You know, whatever your personality is or the personality of your book, make sure that that voice comes out in your marketing copy and just by injecting a very distinct voice into your marketing your marketing copy and your messaging that's one thing that can definitely help you uh, stand out in the crowd and that's just really important you know in talking to this one this new client I said tell me what's unique about you well I have a hundred percent track record every client I've worked with fortune 500 93 of them have doubled their profits in six months and I just said you have my attention You've got my attention. All right. So now let's start Great. doing this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We got, the, we got the proof. We got the proof. All right. With me is Casey Demchak. He is a word merchant personified. Um, and he can take your words to the next level you haven't even imagined. We're going to get into some of the copywriting secrets when we come back after our first break. You're listening to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these is there a book in you or another author you shows you how to create develop and publish your book without being hoodwinked if you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms. And it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at authoru.org. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. 
You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success. A bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author. Your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Casey Demchek is with us, and I want to let you all know about his website because there's a lot of free info. And who doesn't love free info, especially when it's relevant? You can find him at the traditional www.kccasydemchak.com. You can download his free ebook, Seven Must Know Copywriting Secrets to Sell More Books. And um, you can also get his weekly book marketing copy quick tip video blogs. All that's available on his website. Now, in the previous segment, as we closed out, he went over some of the biggest mistakes and he went through, you know, authors don't want to sell. Yeah, we hear that all the time. I just want to write, write, write. Got to get over that. Um, that they really can't pitch their books that delivers the takeaways, which means emotional takeaways, so that they that blocks them. And they talked about not being really conversational enough. Um, in those areas. So those were some of the key components. So Casey, what else should they be looking for? You know, those are, are the big ones for sure. Yeah. And, you know, really it comes down to comfort. I think um, when people feel they have to be salesy, they're not comfortable. So when you look at it from a different point of view of being more conversational, much easier and also providing a lot of benefits. All right. So always the conversation, you know, one of the best compliments I, I, th I had early on, and I think it's because my first books were dictated. I actually sat down with a tape recorder. Um, I mean, I, I actually had a writing coach I was working with the first time out. And he just came in and he sat down with a tape recorder, turned it on, and he said, start talking. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. how I start, that's how I started. And people would say, you know, reading your books was like having a conversation with you. I felt like I was in the same room with you. So I think that's a plus. So be conversational. So those four tips can help you. Those four things can help you. All right. So let's talk. Let's jump into some secrets, Casey. Um, Absolutely. Give us some examples. And maybe you can say, give us some. How about giving us a, a good and then a fix, if you can possibly do that? Okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, the first secret kind of ties into what we were talking about, about being conversational. And, and kind of a good way to get that rolling is when you start writing your book marketing copy, whether it's a back cover or a website sales page or e-blast copy, um, to get rid of the fear of having to make a sales pitch about yourself, start talking about your readers first. Um, think of all the marketing copy you've seen, not only for books, but for all, you know a lot of companies and products where it's, I, 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 we, 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 people yep. have a they just talking about themselves right away. And um, I was talking about this once at a, as a, as a conference that somebody raised their hand and they said, are you saying that we shouldn't we, we on our clients? And every, everybody started giggling like a bunch of fifth graders. So, but I said, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> so when you start writing your marketing copy, talk about your readers first, talk about a challenge they face or a thirst they have or a desire that they have. If you, if you start talking about your readers first, that's a great way to engage people because it's your way of saying, you know, with the, immediately the reader feels like, okay, this person knows what's on, this writer knows what's on my mind. They know, it knows what, uh, they know what my concerns are, my pain points, or just something, you know, I want to know more about. 
So if you can direct your copy immediately start talking about your readers, all of a sudden they're going to pay attention to you and, and, and then start thinking of you as, hey, I want to engage with this person. They're talking about me first instead of themselves. Mm -hmm. So the first rule is put readers first. It's not I. What? It's not an I, and it's really not it's a we. It's a you. You. It's a you. Yeah, that's another tip I'm going to get into in just a bit. But if, if you think about when you write a book, you typically, people read books to quench a thirst of some kind or because they, they face a challenge or they have a desire or they, st or they just want to be entertained. But even if it's a novel, think, you know, if somebody reads romance novels, they probably read a bunch of them and they read a bunch of them. Maybe they're not, you're probably not looking for the absolute best plot, but they read a, a, a romance novel because of the way it's going to make them feel. You know, mm -hmm. somebody who reads somebody who reads a CIA thriller, um, they That's probably me. read a bunch of them. That's yeah, me. and they're going to read them because they they want to be taken behind the scenes. They want to be in on a secret. You know, so if you start that, you know, start talking about it right right away, you'll be pulled into the action and taken behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You're you know you're, you're immediately telling a reader what they're going to get out of the book. And you're kind of tickling that thirst that they have or that desire, mm -hmm. you know, mm. and that's just a great way to start. Make the copy about the reader. You know, you're really addressing something I'm doing right now. Normally, uh, because I, I work with so many nonfiction books. I mean, I work with fiction, too, but I, so, I would say 75 percent of my work is in the nonfiction area. And that so for when I read for pleasure, it really is that dropout. I'm looking for the political thriller or the CIA chase or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not a romance reader and God knows I'm not a horror reader. But um, it's, it's a dropout and it's an entertainment and it's an escapism. But we're, we're moving into a political season. So I have got on my list a bunch of biographies or some sort of a lot of these political candidates and reading them so I can know more about each one of them and either immediately X them out. I don't want to know any more. Or I can tell, you know, you're not telling the truth. That I mean, you can you can you can discern that kind of thing, especially with things that get said. Mm -hmm. so. So anyway, that's that's what I'm so my, what my going some of this reading is for information. You know, I'm looking for information right now. Oh, absolutely. So that makes it kind of fun. I, you know, sometimes it's kind of fun. And I love it when we get insights and ahas that come out. You know, when that will come along, that's always good, too. Oh, yeah. And if you can open up your copy with really teasing up an aha, mm -hmm. you know, that's always a great technique, too. Like if you say, you know, like um, you're just talking about wanting to read biographies about political candidates. If mm -hmm. copy opens up with something like, you know, by page four, you'll know more about, you know, whoever, who, you know, you'll, you'll know more about this person than you ever knew before. You'll find out something about them you never would have suspected. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can start with a little hook like that, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of take people in and tell them. And it's really cool, too, when you can put a page number on it, you mm -hmm. know, by page two or by page or by the end of page one. That's mm -hmm. going to make people open. So if, if, if it's that type of book, if you can tease them with a fact that you're going to reveal or in even use, using the word reveal is a very powerful word. It just gets it kind of sucks people in. You know, on page three, the author reveals, you know, boom, it, you know, or, you know, on, in chapter three, you're going to find out something you never knew. In fact, you may want to jump to chapter three to start out and then work your way back. Something like that to, to, to grab people. Well, you know, this one book I just read, Casey, just just for, you know, that kind of a hook. I finished it and then I went back and read the last 80 pages again. Because there was so much insight that I got from some tidbit way back in the beginning that this one author's, um, her revelation that her mother was a scientist and therefore she was taught the, the she, everything that was thrown at her was with a hypothesis. Then you followed the facts and if the facts disproved it or altered it, then you went back and you went down another path. And she said that how she, that's what created her thinking 
and her questioning of candidates and things like that. And that that was a real insight to her personality and how she operates. And I and I liked it. I got it. So. Yeah, anytime you can you can dig deeper and reveal something and kind of tease up what you're going to reveal. OK, That'll so. Cool. All right. So the, the first real tip here is that you, you have that authentic conversation is what I heard and put mm -hmm. readers first. Um, and, and I think that, you know, what that ties in, Casey, is and because you I you know, I have a love for um, writing back cover copy because I'm more marketing oriented than a lot of people. And that that's where your, your hook has got to be. And if you are not writing to the reader, you're going to kill your sales. Uh, that's my opinion. And that's both for fiction and nonfiction. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Always have the reader in mind and always speak directly to them. Think about them first. Write about them first. And again, have that mindset. And I'm going to get into this in one of the tips because it's, and it's worth repeating a couple of times is mm -hmm. if you start from the mindset of it's not what my, it's not what my book is about that's important mm -hmm. it's what are people gonna, what are people going to get out of my book mm -hmm. if you just put yourself in that mindset that's going to really direct how you write mm -hmm. so and that would also go back and understanding what the reader's problem if you're not writing nonfiction, what's the reader's problem i've always told my authors you need to figure out what the reader's problem is which is going to be the reason why they pick up your book because hopefully you're going to relieve the problem or solve it for them. Well, absolutely. And if you lead with the challenge that they face or the, or the problem that they have, if that's what you read about first, right away what you're saying to them is, I understand what you're going through. You know, or, or the reader's perception of that is going to be, okay, this writer knows what my problem is. And therefore, they're going to give you a chance to then offer your solution to their problem. But if and you no, start, if you grab them right away with, with letting them know you know what their challenge is, all of a sudden you have credibility to then present yourself as a solution. Mm -hmm. And and how important is for the, the author to maybe have experienced some of those challenges themselves? Do you think that oh, adds? Absolutely. Or, okay. Yeah, I think so because it just gives you more credibility. Because ultimately you're going to need uh, – so, you know, if, if you present yourself as a solution – you you want to back that with some social proof, whether it's credentials, mm -hmm. endorsements from other people, um, the experiences you've been through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So with me is Casey Demchek, and we are really talking about how to write killer copy for for inducing your readers to bring them to you. We'll be right back. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. 
Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking about writing this killer copy that is so essential for your marketing and everything you do. With me is Casey Demchek, and his, his website is Casey Demchek, and that's D-E-M-C-H-A-K.com. And, and we've been going through some of the key points. So the first one is you've got to make your sales copy in an authentic conversation um, for all your potential readers. And he really said, and I love this phrase, put your readers first. Put your readers first. So keep that. All right. So, Casey, let's talk about one that I am a nut on. And that is headlines. Benefit driven headlines. So can you get into that? Because I always write headlines for both my fiction and nonfiction back cover copy. And I'm still seeing a lot of the New York. They still throw out all these praise things that, you know, Joe Smith, author of blah, 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 says. And and I have to tell you all listening in, most of those people haven't even read the book. Their publisher asked them to do it. And it's nonsense to me. Your real sales, I believe, come from exactly what Casey just said in his point one, your authentic conversation that's directed to the potential reader's pain or their problem or an emotional issue. So, Casey, jump in here. Yeah, what I always tell people is, is, you know, when it comes to back cover copy and website pages and e-blasts, your headlines and subheads are your most valuable real estate that you have because Mm -hmm. that's how you grab people. And, you know, we were talking about earlier about mistakes. Another mistake I see authors make when they work on their own copy is they try to be, you know, they think, well, I need to engage people. So I need to be really zippy, witty, sexy, clever with my headlines. And, and I always tell people, you know, you can, you can save yourself a lot of stress and strain by going the opposite direction and thinking of simple headlines that, that imply or make a promise of some kind. And I have a number of proven headline formats that help you do that. Okay. Because the goal, the, the goal of the headline is very simple. You want to grab people's attention and drive them into the body copy below the headline. That's all the headlines for. And if you can do that with your headlines and subheads, you've succeeded. So you don't always have to be clever and zippy and sexy. You can be very straightforward. And I've got a few proven headline formats here. Mm-hmm. One of them, one of them I call the problem solution headline. Mm-hmm. And here's an example. Re, you know, this could be for a health book. Reverse your chronic pain without drugs. Very simple. But a lot of people who are suffering from pain and maybe they're, you know, they don't like the side effects of prescription drugs and all that, like most of us don't, you know, if they just read reverse your chronic pain without drugs, they're going to think, how do I do that? Well, the answer is in the body copy. And that's all you got to, that's just enough to grab them, make them go into the body copy. Here's one for a financial book for, for people past 50, how to be, and this is called, this is a how to headline, which are always great. How to headline, I love how to headline, how to build big wealth after age 50. Again, it states or implies a benefit or a promise. It very much implies that if you drop on down to the body copy, you're going to find out or at least get some good tips on how to build big wealth after age 50. Another one is the oh, Okay, Stacey, I, I, I got to stop you. Big what? Wealth. Oh, wealth. Big wealth. Okay, so here's what how I'm here. Here's what I heard. How to build big bulk. 
after 50. Oh, I'm going, damn, we got a bodybuilding no. book. <laughs> <laughs> no, big wealth, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that 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 would be how not to big build how not to build big wolf. Okay. And that would be too many V's, you know. How to build big one. <laughs> okay. Right. And you know, kind of um another great thing that that makes for simple headlines is when you use numbers. People like numbers. Um, and here, a couple, there's a couple kind of formats you can use to utilize numbers. One is a reasons why headline. Here's one, seven reasons why day trading can set you free. Someone who's interested in day trading or wealth building or something like that. Seven reasons why day trading can set you free. Another one is a numbered list headline, which is very closely related. And again, sticking kind of in a, the financial theme, nine habits that lead to financial freedom. Again, you're stating or implying a benefit or making a promise of some kind. You're saying to the reader that if you go into the body copy, you're going to get the seven reasons or you're going to get the nine habits. And the reason people like seven habits or nine reasons right. is because another thing in, in their mind it tells them is that the information is going to be presented in very organized chunks and I can follow through one through seven or one mm -hmm. through nine. And it also may imply, oh, it's a shorter book too. So I can get through this pretty quick. It's not going to be a 400 page tome. It might be 150. I can handle that. Seven reasons. Um, is it is it uh, better, Casey, to use a numerical seven or spell out a seven? You know, in a headline, you can you can just use the, the normal. OK, um, typically, you know, grammatic for, you know, gra grammatically numbers under 10, you want to spell out. I know. In a headline, you, can, you can cheat a little bit in the headline and just use the number. Yes. And it's great to put the number at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, squeeze with the number. Mm -hmm. And also, here's another little trick. It, um, in those two headlines I just gave you, seven reasons why day trading can set you free. Nine mm -hmm. habits that lead to financial freedom. Always look at the last word that you use. Because a lot of times the benefit is in the last word or, or kind of the emphasis in the last word. You know, seven reasons why day trading can set you free. Nine habits that lead to financial freedom. That's mm -hmm. just a little tip of it because it kind of changes things when you use such an important word last. And I'll give you a historic example. You know, if you're, you know, I love NASA and, you know, the Apollo program. We're having yeah. the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. One of the most famous lines to come out of that era was, Houston, we have a problem. And what makes that memorable is the word problem is the last word. And think about it. If it had been, we have a problem, Houston, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But the drama was in the fact in the word problem. And it was the last, Houston, we have a problem. So when, you know, it's, it's kind of a little deeper trick. But when you use these proven headline formats, if you can you make the last word or the last couple words kind of the, the heavy word, it definitely helps hook people. And and it's memorable. That's what they remember. That's what they hear. You know, and a lot of times, well, I used to always tell people that when you first start conversations or you have an issue you really have to get to, sometimes you have to warm them up a little bit to get them ready to listen so they hear what you have mm -hmm. to say. And that's what you're saying with this last word. You drop in, Houston, get their attention. Houston, we've got a problem. Uh-oh problem you know yeah mm -hmm. perfect that's a great example casey i love it all right here, yeah just to just to make a little twist here because whenever whenever i do talks or anything a lot of times you know we talk like what i have in common with you judith is, is probably 85 percent of the people i work with are nonfiction, but i do work with some uh, novelists and a lot of times i'll say okay casey you're giving these non-fiction fiction examples what's a good example of how you can hook people with if you've written a novel and one way you can do that is to use uh, what I call provocative question headline. I worked on a book, well, it's probably been a couple of years now, but it's centered around a serial killer. And you kind of, the book was well written. You started, have, started having some sympathy for the serial killer because um, the serial killer was going after characters that you really didn't like all that much. So, so the headline I came up with was- Is that like Dexter? 
<laughs> That's like Dexter <laughs> TV series. <laughs> so I thought, you know, a, 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 a thought provoking question might be a good way to go here. So I came up with a headline. Could you ever find yourself rooting for a serial killer? You know, something like that can grab people's attention when you have a provocative mm -hmm. question. And when you ever use a provocative question, you always want to make sure that it's a, and it's a tension getter. For example, you wouldn't want to use a headline like, would you like to make more money? Well, everybody does. And that's just a little too, you know, plain Jane. So if you're going to use a, a thought provoking question, you really want to make it a good one. And also be, be prepared to, you know, help people answer the question in the copy. Oh, so yeah, you have to. yeah. Yeah, a provocative question is a good one. Now, a couple more. Um, there's a way to scare people. Also, you can use headlines. I call it the be afraid headline. That can really grab people. And here's one that's very relevant to, you know, everything we're reading about today. But a headline um, like artificial intelligence is about to make you obsolete. Whoa. So someone, if it's a book about artificial intelligence, and you have a headline like that, may not be as horrifying as it sounds, but it kind of grabs people. And again, the last word of that sentence is obsolete. obsolete. That's, the heavy, word. That's mm -hmm. the heavy word. Or for, again, going back to a business book, there's the, you can use what I call the startling fact headline. Um, so a headline like, 74% of small business owners never see this coming. And you go, okay, well, first of all, that's a big percentage. And what is it that they don't see coming? You're naturally going to dive into the body copy to find out if you're a small business owner, you go, well, I might be in that 74% group. Um, what is it that I don't see coming? It's just, you have to dive into the body copy because it's going it, it, to, it, the curiosity factor is going to be too much. Sounds to me like fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then there's also, um, Success story is another format you can go to. If you've written a kind of an inspirational book, something like How I Went from Busted to Abundance in 18 Months. You know, there's there's something like that can get the attention of people because, again, if it's somebody who's, you know, the book is about going from where you are to making big things happen, and you have a headline like How I Went from Busted to Abundance in 18 Months, that could definitely be an attention getter. And, um, also, if you use a success story headline like that, notice in this one, it's in 18 months, not in 18 minutes or 18 days or 18 yeah, seconds. It's realistic. It's realistic. It's realistic. Yeah. Well, it's I, realistic. I, yeah, I have to say, we're going to take our final break here, but one of my favorite headlines is how to lose 10 pounds in 10 days eating 10 junk foods. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is author you. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these the book shepherding concept is simple the publishing world is changing and so must you you need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book. A book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. 
Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Oh, with me, with I think that is a must-listen-to show. Um, Casey Demchek has gone through some of the really essential elements, his secrets. We've talked about making your sales copy an authentic conversation. With our readers, not a one whale sales pitch means bye, 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 bye. It's a conversation. Secondly, you've got to have some of these real simple uh, benefit-driven headlines. He's given you a whole bunch of examples in our last segment. And then I think, Casey, you know, one of your other points, and we've kissed on this one, is and um, just what the book was about. Casey and I, between the break, we were talking about a common term in screenwriting, which is called log line. So, Casey, why don't we get into that a little bit? And, That'd be and, great. All right, let's do that. And what I was sharing with Casey, it always blows me away when I ask a potential client to work with or any author I meet, tell me about your book. And they can go on for 20 and 30 minutes, and I'm still not sure what the book is about because they're going to tell me why they wrote it, how they wrote it, um, you know, I'm, I'm hearing all the other stuff instead of what I want to hear is within 15 or 10 words or less what this book is about to see if I'm interested in going forward. And this is something you all need to do. So Casey brought up the TV guide and I said, oh, yeah, I always read the TV guide in the old days. And we made a decision on what we were going to watch through the week based on one sentence. And Casey, they call that a what? A log line. Okay. So L-O-G. Let's, yeah. yep, let's get into it. You know, what you want to do with a, a good log, log, log line, like if, if number one, you have to put a lot of work into it. To write mm-hmm. something that's 10 to 15 words can take a long time. And you want to hook people. And when you sit down to write that log line, again, we were talking earlier about thinking of the reader, thinking of a benefit. If you can reveal a really strong benefit of the book and do it in a very concise way, that's going to really hook someone's attention. That's what you want to focus on. And also know that, uh, you know, a lot of people say to me, and I'm sure you get this too, Judith, is someone will say, Casey, I-, I need this one little tight lighter. Work your magic. Well, it's not working magic. It's writing and revising and putting a lot of time into it. And because really what you want to do is come up with something. If Judith says to you, what is your book? uh, What is your book about? You want to be able to say something that's going to make Judith sit, you know, kind of move forward in her chair and say, Oh, tell me more. Mm -hmm. Think of great Mm -hmm. speeches you've listened to. Whenever you've gone to an event and you see the PowerPoint screen up there, someone's going to give a talk and you think, oh, okay, another death by PowerPoint kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the speaker comes out and they say one sentence that hooks your attention and makes you slide forward in your chair. And that's, it's really tough to do, but I can tell if you, I think we've all heard speakers who, who've done that. They mm-hmm. don't, and we don't hear them a lot, but we do sometimes. And I guarantee you that that speaker put a lot of time into figure working that line, mm-hmm. coming, you know, coming up with something. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we've all been guilty of this, by the way, as you all listen in here, 
we've all struggled. Those of us who have, you know, do a lot better with our log lines. And I can tell you with one of my most successful books, I bumbled and I did that until I got the log line. And it was contrary to popular belief, men don't discriminate. And I just shut up. And producers, and this was for the media, producers say, well, what do you mean? Everyone knows men do. Nope. Contrary to popular belief, men don't discriminate. Women do. Oh, man. Casey, did that go explosive? <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's, it's an attention grabber. <laughs> and that's you know, what one of my needs. <laughs> One of my favorite ones is when I was a kid uh, and I was like a seven years old, you know, another, another 50 year anniversary thing of, of the Tate LaBianca murders in 1969. Oh, yeah. I was seven years, I was seven years old at the time and it completely scared the hell out of me because yeah. I thought helter skelter, they're friends with the yeah. Beatles or the Beatles going to come get us mom in the middle of the night. And I mean, <gasps> I went to this whole thing. Oh, but man. then when I was, a, when I was a few years older, the book Helter Skelter came out by Vincent Bugliosi, who was the prosecuting attorney. Now, I'm a little older, and I thought, well, I'd heard about the Manson murders. I really want to read about this. And I remember going to the bookstore and opened up. There was, you had the title page, and then I turned to the next page. It was blank except for one sentence in the middle. It just said, this book is going to scare the hell out of you. And I thought, I'm in, you know. <laughs> and really deep down inside, that's what I wanted to be scared. And the book did scare the hell out of me. But but that was an example of that that was their log line. That's what they came up, you know, but it was it was like and they kind of they kind of played on the fact that if you picked up the book Helter Skelter, you'd probably heard about the Manson murders and kind of knew what they mm-hmm. were. So they chose that line. This book book is gonna scare the hell out of you. Well, Nothing and you've got fancy, a, and you've got the movie, you know, a different different take on it. But the the Brad Pitt movie out, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that yeah, comes yeah. back and yeah. totally it totally different, totally different. But it uses that as the genesis um, of it. So it's it's it goes on. But I remember that, and it did scare me a lot. And I lived in Southern California at that time, so. Oh, yeah, I was uh, on the road in San Diego. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so Casey, you talk about uh, leveraging the second most powerful word in marketing. What is it, and how do we do that? It's the mo- second most powerful word in marketing. It, I call it the Buzz Aldrin of marketing words. Uh, <laughs> the, buzz, the Buzz Aldrin of marketing words, all right. But um, it, the word is you. When you write your copy, you want to write what I call you-directed copy. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to direct, you know, if you, and a lot of people don't do this correctly, but when you write copy, always direct your copy to a specific person. You're writing to one person. So use variations of the word you or you'll Mm -hmm. as often as you can. A very basic example, instead of writing something like, in this book, I deliver, write in this book, you'll receive, or you'll gain, or you'll benefit. You know, always kind of twist it to that. Instead of saying, I deliver, it's no, you'll receive. Mm -hmm. So always write copy that is directed, you know, what you're going to get out of it. And if you, if you read, you know, on page four, you'll learn this or you'll gain that. Oh, you know, that's just something you really want to leverage that word because that's just another way of very, uh, of of, of engaging the reader and touching them on an emotional level Mm -hmm. when you make it about them. Mm-hmm. I, I so, I mean, that's that's kind of like in my mantra. Um, and I've always told authors, if you're struggling, that you, you just put down your laptop, stop writing and have a conversation with who your reader is. Go get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, a glass of wine, a beer. I don't care, whatever. You're going to have a conversation. How's your day going? What are the problems? Tell mm-hmm. me about what's happening in your life. And I'll tell you, it opens up a whole new thinking of that. Um, but, and it's also one of my pet, pet peeves is when all the people get into the writing, we will, you, you know, we we will show you how, well, unless you're a right. couple writing together, you're not a we, first of all. Right. Um, and it's gotta be, you will discover, you will learn, you will receive, um, the XYZ books reveals how you can take your blah, 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 blah. 
I mean, and I don't understand why people don't get that. I've never understood why, why do they get hung up with I, 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 and I. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we talked about earlier. Don't we, we, you know, uh, when you look at copy, how, and a way to test your copy is when you've mm -hmm. written your marketing copy, just go through it and do a quick scan to see, well, how many of my sentences begin with the word I or the word we? And a lot of times that we, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen this, Judith, when people hand you their draft of some marketing copy, you just give it a quick scan and you'll see six sentences in a row that start with the word we or we. And whenever know. you see them, you want to correct those sentences and reverse it to where you're making it you directed copy. Yeah. Or you use another word that has an emotion or something in it so you can exchange it. But you got to dump that. Casey, we have a little bit over two minutes left. So I want to make sure that you kiss on what you call at a glance friendly style. What exactly do you mean by that? You want to make your copy so when people just take a quick glance at it, it looks mm -hmm. very inviting to the eye. If you go mm -hmm. to Amazon, when you're on Amazon, look at so many book descriptions. They look like a big chunk of text. It's just a dark chunk of text, oh, and it yeah. looks difficult to read. What you want to do is make, uh, write at a glance friendly copy, and the way you do that is to employ a liberal use of headlines, subheads, benefit-driven bullet points, very short paragraphs. So you write a couple lines of copy, then go to the next paragraph. But break that up with benefit-driven bullet points. Utilize a lot of headlines and subheads. And if you do that, your copy at a glance is going to look very open, a lot of white space. It mm -hmm. invites people in. People will look at that and go, this looks quick and easy to read, as opposed to having everything crammed into a big, chunky paragraph. I actually, when I do presentations, I show an example of at a glance friendly copy, and then I take that copy and using the exact same words, I cram it into one paragraph. And even though both examples are the exact mm -hmm. same copy, the one that is written with utilizing headlines, subheads, and bullet points, a very short right. paragraph, yeah. it just looks quicker and easier to read, which motivates people to read it. You know, one of the best things that helped me write was I was the columnist for the business journals for 10 years, and I learned to love. Uh, one sentence paragraphs. I learned to mm -hmm. appreciate a one word sentence <laughs> and it changed my philosophy and my style dramatically, just dramatically. And uh, a big, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, and that's very important these days. You know, I use a lot of one sentence paragraphs Me too. because a lot of people, when they read your copy now, they're reading it on their phone. So when you're working on your big desktop, if you write a couple, three sentences, you think, well, that looks like a short paragraph. But imagine that when it's compressed into a mobile phone. A lot right. of people read on their phone. So it and, looks like two or three lines on your computer are going to look like seven or eight lines on a phone. And with that, we have got to close off. Casey, I would love to have you come back and we can continue our conversation in a part two. How's that sound? I would love to do that. I got a lot more tips, Judith. Perfect. All right, everyone, have a great publishing writing week. We'll be back with you next week. It's Judith Files. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets, and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.